In this video, I'll show you how to use Unix environment variables in Rails. Hi, this is HG from the Full Stack Videos channel. I recently created a video that shows how to set up Unix environment variables on Mac and explains what they are. If you're using Ruby on Rails to build web applications, you'll need to know how to access Unix environment variables from your Rails apps. Almost any Rails application will use Unix environment variables. Just to recap, we use Unix environment variables to set configuration values like passwords and API keys. That's why they are important. Credentials like passwords often need to be different on different computers, so environment variables give us a way to set credentials locally. And we don't want secret credentials like password mix into our code. If you watch my video about Unix environment variables, you can see how I set an environment variable for an email address. Let's see how we get that email value into our Rails application. Start by opening a terminal window. You can use Unix shell commands to see if the email variable has been set by typing echo space dollar sign email all in caps and enter. If it's not set, watch my Unix environment variables video to learn how to set it. I'll assume you already have Rails installed. Either you've installed Ruby with a Ruby version manager, or you are using the version of Ruby that comes installed with Mac OS X. Type Ruby space minus V and enter to confirm Ruby is installed. Run the interactive Ruby shell by typing IRB and enter. You'll see a new prompt that expects Ruby language keywords, not Unix commands. At the prompt, type puts env email. Look at the screen for the exact syntax as you'll need brackets and single quote. You should see the email environment variable you set in your .bash underscore profile file. Type exit and press enter to quit the interactive Ruby shell. I'll assume you have Rails installed. Let's confirm Rails is installed by typing Rails space minus V. Let's build a simple Rails application so we can try to access the email environment variable. Type rails space new space my app. After the simple rails application is generated, use the unix change directory command to cd into the rails project folder by typing cd space my app. Start the rails interactive console. It is similar to the interactive ruby shell but it gives you access to your Rails application from the command line. Type Rails space console. You'll see a new prompt that expects Ruby language keywords and gives you a response from your Rails application. At the prompt, enter the puts env email we used before. It's the same Ruby command that displays the email environment variable in the console. You should see the email environment variable you set in your dot bash underscore profile file, you'll be able to use it anywhere in your Rails application. Type exit and press enter to quit the Rails console. Open the Rails application with your text editor by typing atom dot. Find and open the file config slash secrets dot yml. Under the development heading, add a line that sets a configuration value. First, we'll hardcode a value for an email address. Later, we'll set it using an environment variable just to see how it works. Be sure to indent the new variable, just like the secret key base variable that is already there. Notice we use an underscore in my email. That's just for readability, because we can't use a space in a Ruby variable name. Save the file and go back to the terminal window and start the Rails console again by typing Rails space console. Every Rails application can access the configuration variable set in the config secrets YML file. Try it from the Rails console again. This time, display the configuration variable from the config secrets YML file. That's how you read variables from the config secrets YML file. Type exit and press enter to quit the Rails console. Let's see Unix environment variables in action. Go to your Rails application again and edit the config secrets YML file again. This time, we will replace the hard-coded variable 
with a Unix environment variable that is set in the shell. This is how we keep our secrets out of the secrets file, so we don't mix secrets into our code. Notice we use a special syntax to set the value. If you have experience using embedded Ruby in a web page, you'll recognize the config secrets YML file is like an ERB view template. If you don't know about embedded Ruby, don't worry. Just copy what you see here. The bracket percent equal means you can embed Ruby code to set the variable. Save the file and let's open the Rails console again in the terminal. Try the same code we used earlier. We'll display the configuration variable from the config secrets YML file again. This time, we don't see the hard-coded value. If everything works correctly, you should see the email environment variable you set in your .bash underscore profile file. That's it for a simple demonstration. You've seen how we can verify the presence of an environment variable using the interactive Ruby shell. And you've seen how we obtain the environment variable in the secrets YML file and verify it with the Rails console. You can use configuration variables anywhere in your Rails application. Rails will obtain the value from the config secrets.yml file, which in turn obtains the value from the shell, which was set with the .bash underscore profile file. So here's where you ask me, HG, why do we set a configuration variable in so many places? First, we set it in the .bash underscore profile file, then in the config secrets YML file, then we use another variable to obtain the value in our code. You may have figured out we could just use the Ruby environment variable directly in our code anywhere without bothering with the config secrets YML file. Or we could just hard code the value in our config secrets YML file and not bother with the Unix environment variables. So why all the complexity? It's considered good practice to put all the configuration variables in the config secrets YML file. I like to think of it this way. If bad guys get access to my code, they can find all the secrets in one place without searching through my application. Well, maybe not bad guys. It actually makes it easier for other developers or my future self to see all the configuration values needed for my application in one place. And why do we bother with setting variables in the config secrets.yml using Unix environment variables? Because the secrets YML file is not really secret. We need to check it into our git version control repository like every other file, especially if we plan to deploy our application using the Heroku hosting platform. If we hard code secret credentials like passwords into the config secrets YML file, Everyone will see our secrets, especially if it's a public project on GitHub. That's why we set Unix environment variables locally, where they are only accessible to us on our own computer, and then import them using the config secrets YML file. It's both a way of organizing our code for easy maintenance and a way to keep credentials secret. I'm going to mention two gems that can be used as alternatives to setting environment variables in the Unix shell. One gem, named Figaro, lets you create a Rails application YML file for configuration settings. Another gem, .env gem, is very similar to Figaro, except it loads environment variables from a .env file. If you can't set your environment variables in the shell, try either of these gems as an alternative. With either one, you have to be careful not to include the configuration files with the secret credentials in a Git repository. I hope you've gained better understanding of how to use Unix environment variables in Rails. You'll be using them in almost every application. If you're a subscriber, I'd like to say I appreciate your support for the project. To get more videos like this and learn about our project, send me an email. The address is more at fullstackvideos.com. Come back for more!